Today, I'm going to attempt a 2 million PM kit rebuild, which is a lot of fuser stuff. Um, just because I've been starting to have jamming problems, which I think could be related to humidity, but I know there's lots of parts of the fuser here that are beyond their usable life. So I'm just gonna run this kit through here, clean rollers out, and uh, hopefully that helps me out. I've never done one of these before, but it should be fairly straightforward. I have the parts here, uh, you know, the upper and lower fusing roller. Uh, there's bearings, insulating sleeves, the claws that take the paper off of the fuser roller, both upper and lower, I believe, are in this kit. Um, so yeah, I already pulled the fuser out. It's just one screw here. Uh, after you have your tray out, pop your fuser up here. And then there's four screws on top. One, two, three, four. And then it opens up. And I already took the top roller out. I got started here before I got my camera running. Um, to take that out, uh, you have one screw on the side that holds this bracket on. Uh, and one screw that holds your wires. And you unplug two wires on that side, two on this side. And that whole unit pops out and I have it setting over here. Uh, this is actually pretty new, only a few weeks old. Um, it is a off-brand uh, upper fuser roller. I don't think this is causing me problems, but I'm, I'm curious. Uh, so I'm just going to put everything on the kit in and then I'll just be keeping this and the lower roller as a spare. Uh, this one's starting to break down here, uh, but could really go for another million clicks the way it is. Got some old insulating sleeve up in here, and uh, I'm just going to vacuum this out, tidy it up a bit. Now, since I'm not familiar with all the parts in this kit, I want to set them out and make sure I know where they go. So as I open this up, when I get to the part that needs to go in, it goes in, and I'm not left over with extra parts. So let's do that. Yeah, I had to look it up at the manual, but a lot of these parts are actually for the drum cleaning unit. Uh, the t there's a toner guide brush. Regulating plate assembly, there's two of those. And guide plate assembly. All go in the cleaning unit down in here, so we don't need that for the fusing unit. But this fixing cleaning sheet assembly that goes right down in here. So we're going to put that in and then put the rollers back in. Maybe I should have just bought a new fuser. I saw online that you could get an entire new fuser for like 2000 bucks. And, well, I think I bought this kit on eBay for like six or seven hundred dollars, so But still I'm almost halfway to a brand new fuser I probably should have considered that
That was a lot of springs and clips. That'll be the last time I have to do that. I don't know. Well, I gotta check on the counters. That may have been the only time those were done. I kind of doubt it. It says that there's 20 million on the, those claws. Um, but I'm sure that kit was done before. But I don't even know that it needed to be done. I mean, these things are still in pretty good shape. They're not too worn down. But maybe you get a little bit better performance out of new ones. Okay, and let's reset those before I forget. Fixing claws, top and bottom. We have the upper sleeves and bearings as well. Heat sleeve top. Top roller bearing, clear. Fixing CL sheet. You know, I think that was the thing I put in the bottom. It really doesn't matter if I clear it or not. Now let's get this upper roller in and then and then we'll be done. And then this is just all for in the imaging area, uh, the drum cleaning unit. I'm not exactly sure where that suction filter goes. Probably over there as well, where the developer is. And let's reset the upper and lower roller. There's only 17,000 on that top roller, but almost one and a half million on the bottom roller. And if you're curious, it took me about 45 minutes to do that, which is not too bad. Okay, so this is running actually pretty good when it comes to large sheets of paper. But if I'm printing eight and a half by 11, I still get an error here. This is what it looks like underneath. My sheet goes around, comes down, and doesn't go any further than that roller there. And uh, I clean this, but uh, I, it feels funny. It feels as if uh, the belt that is driving this uh, will sometimes miss. And I'm assuming that large sheets, it, it, it's fine. I guess it's okay if it misses a little bit, but then it catches up. But uh, for these small sheets, it's not feeding past there. Uh, but the belt that drives that's on the other side, so I need to take it apart a little bit to get in there. 
uh, and then I don't know if I can tighten it or replace it or if there's teeth missing. We'll take a look. The other thing is single-sided small sheets run fine. So it's only duplexing a small sheet where I get that jam. And it has happened in the past and there's a roller in there that I cleaned off that was really dirty. I thought it was going to help, but I'm pretty sure there's something else in there that's wrong. Now the roller that's on the other side of these three rollers was the one that was really dirty and I cleaned that. I just popped these rollers off and then cleaned all those as I rotated it. But it, I'm pretty sure it's the drive and not the actual roller that's giving me the problem here. So now I need to take this off so I can look in there where the belt is. Yep, I know you can't see it, but I can feel a spot here where there's teeth missing on this belt. That's the problem. I gotta order a belt. Okay, so I have that button back up, and as I said, I can run large sheets with no problem. It's only small sheets for some reason that that mangled up belt that's missing teeth uh, is affecting. But I have a new belt on the way. Um, I'm not sure. If I'll put that in this video, probably not. Uh, but I think I had like two more screws to take the motor off and then that belt would go right on the back there and put it all back together. Then we should be good. Two lessons learned from this video. One, don't always assume it's the end of the world. Man, whenever something happens on this and I can't fix it quickly, I freak out. I think, well, it's a boat anchor. It's time to replace it. Time to get something else. And the thing is, is typically I have stuff to print when that is happening. So there's an added stress level of, hey, I need to be running this machine. And then that helped, I mean, that hurts because then I can't think right. So don't assume for the worst. It's often something simple. That's the nice thing about having backup machines because we had work that we needed to get done on there yesterday. No big deal. We can run them on other machines, uh, even though they're color machines. It's all right, though. Takeaway number two. Oh, yeah. Make sure that you walk away uh, and sleep on it or think about it. You know, do something else. Because so often I come back later and then I can just kind of dive into it and I'm not as stressed out. So you can't always do that. But those are two things I always have to remind myself. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.